Hi everyone and welcome to the Vaucluse House Kitchen Garden. My name's Anita and I'm one of the horticulturists here at Sydney Living Museums. And I'm going to take you on a little tour of the garden to show you how we're preparing it for the spring harvest. One of the first things you'll notice as you enter the kitchen garden is this prickly pear hedge. Now originally the prickly pear was brought into the colony to feed the cochineal beetle which provided the red dye for the coats of the soldiers but gradually it evolved into a handy stock fence because it's so prickly it would keep the livestock out of the garden. So if you come over here and have a look at this these are actually our first decent sized asparagus spears to come through. Now we've been growing these asparagus for about two years now and the crowns are just about to mature. See previously the spears have been these skinny little things but um, these look really good and healthy. And if you don't pick asparagus spears they start to grow into the asparagus bush and uh, gradually they just get more and more bushy and fall over and die back and then you cut them right down again and generate more spears and so it goes. Here we have a very old fashioned root vegetable called salsify which has a beautiful purple flower. Um, it's grown for its root which is a little bit like a carrot but it's white and it's, it's actually called oyster plant because it tastes like oysters which um, really doesn't sound very attractive does it? There you go and here we have a stem vegetable called cardoon. Now this is related to the artichoke but instead of eating that big choke flower bud that you do with the artichoke the stem is used, much like celery, only it's roasted or baked. They still cultivate this uh, commercially in some parts of Europe, but here it's more of a novelty. I had a lot of trouble finding seed for cardoons this year, so this one single plant in the garden is uh, very important because I'm waiting for it to flower so that I can collect a seed and uh, grow a few more next season. So you might notice here that we have a lot of nasturtiums growing and not only is it because they're beautiful but they attract the bees, um, they deter bad insects like aphids and also in this case they stabilise this bank which is very sandy and whenever it rains we lose a lot of sand down the hill. So here we have some artichokes. Now, people may not know that the actual artichoke that you eat is the flower bud and here's a perfect example of it coming through. These artichokes uh, that we have growing at the moment are doing really well and you can get anywhere from three to a dozen chokes on one single plant. So here in the kitchen garden we like to build a lot of frames and they, they not only provide a lot of visual interest they're for a practical purpose as well. It gives a support for things that climb like peas and beans and melons and cucumbers to grow up. Well here we have a really fabulous patch of rhubarb and as you can see it's got beautiful deep red stems and this is a perennial plant which means you can just keep growing it all year round. So here we have broad beans which were planted way back in mid-June and you can see they're getting up here right now and looking really healthy. Now once these get to about this height and start to set beans you can pinch the tops of the plants out which are edible in their own right and then it puts more energy into developing beans. While we don't have many pests in the kitchen garden we do get a few and, and one of them is aphids on our broad beans. Now what I would generally do is just spray them with white oil and that, that suffocates them. But you really must keep an eye on them because if you, don't, uh, if you don't come into the garden for a day or two at a time they can really get a hold and um, stunt the growth of your, your beans. So here we have a bed that's completely planted out. We're starting with the red Russian kale, we've got the Egyptian beetroot, purple carrots and we've got a purple Sicily cauliflower which has a head just like a regular cauliflower except it's purple. 
Here we have the onions, which were the very first vegetable we planted way back in March. Our onions take at least six months to grow to eating stage. So thanks for coming on a little tour of the kitchen garden with me. Now, if you're visiting Vorkalu's house, please come and have a look at the garden because things are always being planted, being harvested, changing, growing, and we'd really love to see you.